there's a specific story that's in the Los Angeles Times, but it talks to a, <clears throat> a larger issue here of how um, illegal immigrants don't have legal representation like a regular person would have when so uh, the Supreme Court obviously it's a upheld that you know if you're arrested you are allowed legal representation and there's a story here about Davino Watson um, who was Jamaican born and he was held um, he pleaded guilty in a New York court to selling cocaine and he served an eight-month sentence um, as he neared release federal immigrant immigration agents filed the detainer letter with the prison uh, with the Jamaican-born Watson was held, asking officials to hang on to him until they could pick him up as a suspected immigrant living in a country without permission. It would be three and a half years before Watson gained his release from federal custody. And the, after the government finally admitted it made a mistake. Watson, it turned out, was a U.S. citizen, something he had asserted from the time immigration agents said they wanted to deport him, but the government screwed up the investigation. The errors included failing to follow up on the identification information Watson provided and making Watson's father, whose naturalization in 2002 automatically granted his then minor son citizenship for a non-citizen with a similar name but different biographical data. So, and then he had more legal hurdles after that. Um, and even had some mistakes. The reason he made these had to have these more legal hurdles and made some mistakes, he didn't have a lawyer. That's because immigration law is a civil matter. And no one in civil court is entitled to a lawyer. So Watson, who didn't graduate from high school, was forced to defend himself alone against a wrongful deportation proceeding. Um, and the law also presumes that he would have enough knowledge to realize that he had to start his civil lawsuit for damages over his still in progress illegal detention within two years of beginning his detention, even though he was still being deta detained. That's a little terrifying, isn't it? And if it's all like, oh, we want these drug dealers and bad guys out of here, these bad hombres, why was he held here for three and a half years? The federal government continually screwed up and he didn't have a lawyer. If you're the most low-life criminal, uh, you, get a, you get a public defender <laughs> and whatever. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, who knows, but at least you have an attorney, you have something. I mean, I have a college degree, but I wouldn't know how to defend myself in court. I mean, what the hell would I know how to say? Let alone a guy that's from another country. English isn't his first language. Okay, he sold, co he sold cocaine. He pleaded guilty, got eight months. He did his time. An extra three and a half years after that? Um, it's just preposterous. And I'll read the final paragraph here. Fairness dictates that if the government is in a position to deprive someone of his or her freedom, that person ought to have a right to legal help. In Watson's case, it's appalling that a U.S. citizen, yeah, he was a U.S. citizen. Oh, but he's not white and he's got a weird accent and a name, so let's just assume he's guilty. Um, it's appalling that a U.S. citizen was held by his own government without cause. It's even more appalling that the arcane rules of the civil courts now protect the government from liability for the time it stole from Watson. He doesn't even, he can't even sue them for damages because they screwed up. Can you imagine that? This is what a police state looks like. They can lock you up. And uh, they did this, you know, while Obama was president, apparently. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, a decade ago, 2007. So no, it was under Bush. But then part of Bush and Obama let this happen. Like, okay, somebody commits a crime, but this is, this is the cornerstone of our so-called democracy is you're innocent until proven guilty and you get legal representation. Everybody gets legal representation. Everybody. So 
it's another example of how the corporate state has basically crushed the social contract, and this isn't a, a, a fair democracy. They can just lock somebody up for no reason. If I start threatening them too much, they're going to lock me up somehow. They, they'll try to, you know? Or they'll just banish me as a wing nut or whatever. That's what's going to happen. I've already lost work from doing this show and my political beliefs. As I reported, I lost a job down at Comic-Con for a movie review company. It wasn't a crazy amount of money, but it would have helped pay my bills. I had to liquidate a life insurance policy. So this is how this country is operating. If you're under any delusions, oh, this can't happen to me. They can eventually. This guy was a U.S. citizen. He was a U.S. citizen. Anybody watching the show born in another country but now lives in America and you're in a U.S. citizen? Well, they could do it to you. You got a weird sounding name. You got an accent. Is your skin a little too dark? They'll come get you. This bums me out. But it's all the more reason why we need real progressives in there to make a change. Because this could happen to anyone.